Daily Justine Live. Why am I in such a good mood today? Well, today apparently is Fed Day. I thought it was tomorrow, but it's today apparently. I don't know because I guess I suck at what I do. This is like the one job I gave myself. I was like, oh look, I don't, I can't work my job anymore, so why don't I go ahead and make Fed watching my job, and I suck. Because this is a big day, and I didn't realize, so... Anyway, today is Fed Day. Today is the day that the Fed comes out and says whether or not they're going to raise interest rates. Which, I think the issue is I've just gotten so bored of all this, because it's like... I don't know. <laughs> what? Why is this a, a thing? This is working, right? Yeah, this is working. So, like, why is this a thing? Why can't they just, like, say when or if they're going to raise interest rates? Well, why is this, like, um, actually, let's talk about why this is a thing, shall we? I got, um, some notes here, and I'm, like, a few minutes early, so I'm going to pause, I'll wait, and I'll just sit here and enjoy my coffee for a second. How's that sound to everybody? Sound good? Sound bad? Sounds good to me. And I want to give a shout out to, um, um, I want to give a shout out to Shadowstock for sending me an article yesterday because it really helped kind of compact what I wanted to talk about today because today was, I knew I wanted to talk about the economy I knew I wanted to talk about quantitative easing, but I wasn't sure how to make it um, digestible, I guess, <laughs> because this stuff sounds very boring, and it sounds like um, it's hard to understand. I assure you that it's not. Um, I don't know if anybody's here, but this seems to be working, so what I'm going to do is keep going anyway, because today's important, and... Yeah, today's Fed Day. Let's go to CNBC.com. See what they... I was watching CNBC earlier. See, today... <clears throat> I didn't watch much news this morning because... The, it, I don't know. I just I slept in. It's like, I don't care. You know, I'm so sick of freaking the same things over and over again. He, here's an article. Here's what to expect from the Fed. Well, actually, I don't even have to read this because I can look at the pre-market action to see what the market is expecting from Janet Yellen. It looks like they're expecting her to not raise rates. And another positive thing for the stock market today is oil is up quite a bit. And the market seems to be trading in tandem with oil lately, so that's good news. Oil's up nearly 2%, it looks like. So, today will be a good day. And the problem with the Fed is um, they, they've really lost quite a bit of credibility. Why? Because they did these extreme... After the crisis, which is, you know, they had their part in it. They kept interest rates as low as they did. They made the housing bubble even possible. And now... And then since then, they've been, how have they been dealing with the crisis? It's under a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of people, um, okay, it's 10 a.m. Hi, welcome to Daily Justine Live. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm ranting about the economy and about quantitative easing specifically. We're talking the Fed today. I don't know if anyone's even in here. Yeah, there's, looks like there's a couple people in here. Yeah, good. So I guess this is working. Um, there you go. Oh, someone left. <laughs> someone, someone's like, nah, I'm, just, I'm sick. Someone went to sleep because I put them to sleep. Anyhow, so, yeah, we're talking the Fed because the Fed is like a big deal because they're basically running the show. You know, the Fed... Issue, issues the currency we borrow to use as money to pay for, um you know, food and our bills. So they're kind of important. And I don't mean to like sit here and like diss the Fed, you know, seriously, because they, they've only got like two tools that they can use. So, you know, there's only so much criticism I can use. You know, it's easy to blame the Fed, but it has more to do with, um, yeah, the Fed, but also, uh, monet also our fiscal policy. 
Um, meaning it's also some of the government's fault. So this is um, just something I've been interested in. This is something, um, yeah. So basically, um, <clears throat> I, was, I was given a link to a great article on Zero Hedge, which I'm very surprised I missed this article on Sunday because I love Zero Hedge. And you might be wondering, Justine, why are you reading Zero Hedge? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay, so the article, uh, so thank you to Shadowstock. I'm going to um, link him in the article below when this is done. But basically, let me click on it. No, I lost it already. It's okay. I took notes. Um, you know what I was reading about on Wikipedia was quantitative easing because I was trying to find an, a different article one of the um, architects of, of quantitative easing, actually I think the guy who um, quantitative easing was his brainchild, he came out and he talked about what a failure the program was, and this was a few years ago. I think it was published to Rolling Stone because no other, like what other news site would post this. But I couldn't find it. Um, so, anyway. So this um, Zero Hedge article was about... Um, it was about um, Steve Iceman, which is the the guy. He's he's in The Big Short, so or it's what the character is based on. This guy Steve Eastman. Um, he basically he he was one of the one of the guys that was shorting or betting against uh, the the U.S. housing market and the U.S. economy. So he. Um, he's been kind of like, since this happened, I mean, this is a real guy, Steve, Steve Iceman. Kind of sounds like the, the Fed guy at CNBC. Anyway, so he's been kind of a recluse since then. He hasn't said much, but he was invited to give a keynote speech at, um, at the East Conference, um, or I'm sorry, the 22nd Annual ABS East Conference. There's a, um, which is basically, it's another uh, Jackson Hole. It's basically a, um, it's just a group of investors. And uh, there's actually a scene in the big short that takes place at this conference where he blows up this guy, Steve Eastman. I forget his, the character's name in the book and movie, but he blew up at this conference. And he blew up again on Sunday. <laughs> Because he was talking about um, what the next big short is. And somebody asked me about this not long ago. You guys were like, hey, at the end of the movie, it alluded to there being another big short. What is that? Well, he got into it a little bit. And I just want to say before I get into this that it, pro it's, it might sound like this guy is like Republican, like anti-everything. Um, I don't know, anti, uh, I don't know, I don't know what people think, but he's actually a very progressive guy. He's for Obamacare. He's not necessarily against, um, like, a public solutions to problems, so he's, he's a very progressive guy. He's not anti, uh, I don't know how to, how to say it, um, loose monetary policy. I don't know how to put that simply, but he's, you know, he's progressive. He's not you know, uh, a heavy, he's, uh, it's not like he's like, oh, we got to pay down the debt and not pay for anything and not print anything, you know, he's not like that, he's, he's, um, a very progressive guy, um, who sees benefit, maybe, to loose monetary policy, he sees, um, um, yeah, so, he, he's smart, he, he's not like, um, yeah, anyway, this guy Steve Eastman, before I, I just wanted to make that clear before I got into this, because he's not like, um, anti the Fed, anti, uh, big banks, uh, you know, he's not like a, um, what's the word, like a anarchist, I guess, I don't know how to put it, but, but he's, um, otherwise like a, you know, a, a pretty, um, establishment guy. That's a, that's a way I can put it. 
But he did see a problem with um, the housing market. He saw asset bubbles created by the low in interest rate policy. He's just smart. You know, he saw this happening. Nobody else was seeing it. The media wasn't seeing it. Other investors weren't seeing it. They kept in investing in houses. But he was out there for years before the housing crash, being like, nah, this is a bubble. This is going to crash. This is an asset bubble. This is... Um, all right, let me back up. What's an asset bubble? <laughs> Basically, an asset is something tangible that you own, like a house, like a um, car, I guess, like a... Uh... So, he... Um... And then what happens is it's it's the, the prices going up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, so, he saw... And basically, eventually, these prices come down to reality. It's these prices get uh, they're encouraged to go up and up and up because of loose monetary policy. Meaning, because it was it was easy for banks to borrow money. It was low interest rates again. So the low interest rates were allowing the prices to go up and up and up. And he was like, "Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is a bubble." JS, just saying. So he was out there um, saying it was a bubble, um, nobody was believing him, he was like another Peter Schiff, whatever, just like Peter Schiff, he, that's how he makes his money now. Anyway, so um, basically he was invited back to this, um, to this uh, annual ABS East conference on Sunday. He gave a keynote speech where he blew up again and he let us know what the next big short is. So that's coming up. All right, so he said that, um, well, this is really funny. This is a quote from, from his keynote speech. Um, you fuckers blew up planet Earth. Shut up and move on. <laughs> it's just funny because he, he just, he's having no sympathy for these bankers, for these investment people, because he's like, you, you ruined it. So now you got to deal with it. Move on. You know, so no, that, that was funny to me. Because he, he also had a lot to say about quantitative easing. Now, what's quantitative easing? I feel like this is very boring. How can I make this not boring right now? I don't know how to make this not boring. But it's it's like... But that's the thing. I, I feel like almost it's like... They give... By they, I mean the powers that be. The bankers, the media, the whatever. They give them like a complicated name like quantitative easing. So that you fall asleep before you have even have a chance to learn what it is. You know, how are you going to be mad at a policy where you when you don't even understand what the policy is? And it's not that complicated. Basically, quantitative easing was um, the Fed, the Fed um, printing money to purchase assets. This happened in, from the crisis 2009, I believe, until 2013, I think is when it ended. I don't know, because I, I I wanted to get these dates, but this Wikipedia page about quantitative easing is really lacking. Um, but basically, they printed money to buy assets, troubled assets, and, it, and, and what it did, it did was stirred confidence into... That's the way I think of QE. That's how I'm going to shorten it from now on. Quantitative easing is QE. QE was basically a con game. It's like... Oh, don't worry, Fed's got your back. Fed's sopping up all the all the bad assets. Because that's what it was. There was a lot of troubled assets on the market. Like, a lot of bad mortgages. And the Fed went ahead and bought them. And where are they now? On the balance sheets of banks. And it's kind of like... And the reason why there hasn't been hyperinflation because of all this money printing to buy these assets is because that money is, like, kept in coffers. You know, it's like on the balance sheets of, of, uh, of the Fed. So if that money were to leak out into the actual economy at all, then we would have inflation. But, you know, it, it's one of those things. It's, it's like a nuclear weapon, all this money, because it's just sitting there and it could be used. It could be leaked. It could be... Um, and that would destroy the economy. Th though that's not the problem that um, Steve Eastman saw here. That's not what he what he talked about, though. That's a problem that I see. That's what scares me. This money could be used for whatever. It's just sitting there. It's basically... 
So basically the way that I think of it is the US dollar has already been hyperinflated. It's just all those dollars are sitting on a balance sheet somewhere. Just dropped something. Anyway, so, so it's kind of uh, depressing to me because that's why our economy screwed, because we've already destroyed our currency. It's destroyed. There's no like, oh, let's not do this because it'll destroy the currency. Nah, it's already ruined. It's already ruined. It's just, it's all the bad dollars have been bought by some, by an entity and now it's sitting on a balance sheet. It's kind of like a, not long ago I um, decluttered my room. And there's a bunch of stuff that I would that I didn't want to throw out, but I wanted to hoard, so it's in a big plastic bin behind a bunch of stuff. So it's but it's still there. At some point I'm gonna need to do something with that stuff. It's just sitting there. You know, at some point it's just it's just sitting there for now. But at some point I'm gonna have to do something with that stuff. It's like um at some point I'm gonna have to unpack it. Get what I'm saying? It's at some point this is going to need to be unwound at some point. That's the problem that I see with QE. Um, not so much uh, the Steve Eastman character because his um, big concern is actually European banks. Because European banks are actually in a lot more debt than here. So he, that's the problem that he sees. He sees a, um, and I can see this too, it's like a, um, a bailout bubble on the horizon, meaning you know, okay, we bailed out Greece, bailed, bailed out, um, I'll talk about Greece another time, but, um, Italy's gonna need a bailout, Portugal's gonna need a bailout, Puerto Rico's gonna need a bailout, it's all these, at some point, it's like, countries, because the bailouts just keep getting bigger and bigger, right? So at some point, we're bailing out countries, and then at some point, we're gonna be bailing out central banks, and then at some point, the central bank um, is bailed out by, like, the IMF, and then the IMF needs to bail out. It's like this whole thing, you know? So that's what Steve Eastman sees. He, he sees, um, like a bailout bubble, which is interesting. Um, he called QE no more than monetary policy for rich people. And what that means is, during all those years that QE was going on, I was doing what I'm doing now, that whole time. I was watching the news, I was watching, what was maddening to me during all those years was, it was, it was kind of considered very, um, um, no, you, you, you didn't, um, criticize this policy. You didn't say anything bad about QE. You didn't, because if you did, then you were gloom and doom. Then you were a loser because, because if you were a winner, you'd be invested in the stock market. I remember that. It was, and it went on for years, and it was maddening because that was conventional uh, finance at, at that time during those years. It was, uh, but the thing about QE was it forced you into risk. If, if you had money to invest, which most people don't, I wish I did. Anyway, if you had money to invest, um, th there was no place other than risk, meaning the stock market, to put your money. So... It was people that could afford to gamble that made money on the... Because it, it was kind of like it, with the Fed doing QE, it was kind of a guaranteed win. Because... What time is it? I've been going on and on. I don't know if this made sense at all. Let me look at the chat. So it may, maybe, um... So, dot, dot, dot. Um, what about the billions we're giving to the Middle East? Well, that, um... Look... It, it's kind of like along the lines what I'm talking about. At this point, see, this is the, this is the point that we find ourselves in right now. We can either, um, because we're in, we're in a bit of, of a pickle, our economy, we can either continue to print money and print our way out of this and hyperinflate our currency, or we can acknowledge that that the debt's unpayable, that our currency's worthless, that, I mean, we could go through the default process, I guess, and either way, we're fucked. So either way, we're default, you know, so I wonder, I can't help but wonder if, um, um, collapse all and rebuild as one currency. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that, 
um, our currency screwed. And that's the, that's the problem. That's, you know, there's no fixing that. Good morning, Matt. Um, so I just like depressed myself to death. I didn't mean to depress everybody. It's just, you know, that, that's, that's where we find ourselves. And that's why I can't, you know, I'm not partisan or I'm not partisan on here. I'm trying to get the message across that it's already fucked. So if there's some kind of crisis, if there's, if there's some kind of crisis, I just want people to realize that it's not because anything, because the news is going to make it about like something you did wrong, like the Brexit vote. Oh, all those, all those ignorants that voted Brexit. I need to make a broadcast about Brexit. Brexit was on my birthday, June 23rd. Um, how was your weekend? Oh, it's Wednesday already though. My weekend was fine. My weekend was, uh, my weekend was fine. Thank you. I was just talking to someone and they were like, how was your week? How was your weekend? And I was like, I don't remember. I went live on Saturday. That was fun. I, um, what did I do this weekend? I don't remember. Um, um, it seems to me we're in a consumer-based economy, uh, not producing. Well, yeah, though, you know, there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself. Um, we, you know, we could still have a consume. we could have an economy with a consumer-based economy. I'm just saying that our, our money, our currency is worth nothing because it was ruined. And not just because of the banks. Th this is my point. This is what I want to try to get across because it's, easy to blame the banks for making bad de bad bets, bad whatevers, but nah, it's also, it was also our um, fiscal policy as a nation and the policy we've had for decades. So it's like, there's no, like say for example, because I wanted to start doing these broadcasts because the debt ceiling thing is coming up in uh, early next year and it's a thing every year. And a few years ago, there was actually a government shutdown because of this. Eventually, we, you know, the government went back on. But it's like, I, I would hate it if there's some kind of crisis like that, and then people have no idea what's going on, and then they're, like, pointing fingers, you know, like, like you know, one half of people being like, oh, this happened because of all the, um, because of the indigents taking uh, government money via, you know, like a welfare, I guess, and, um, and then the other side that's like, nah, this is because of all the wastely wars, and it's just, it's actually both, you know, it's everything. It's just, it's like the lifestyle, you know, it's, um, want to know what's hard? Gay dating in the South is a vegan. That I actually can't imagine that because it's hard enough if you're vegan. Look, I'm a, I'm in a very progressive area. I'm in New Jersey, and it's still very odd for a person to be vegan. I, I still get like I made a I made a broadcast about it. Why vegans are jerks? It's because people like come at me with their um like they're angry at me when I don't say anything to anybody about how they eat. You know, I, I'm just over here doing my thing, and I still experience, like, a, I still experience, um, I, I, I don't mean to, you know, to play the victim here, but, <laughs> what's that word I'm looking for? Damn, I can't think of words. Uh, what's that word when, when people are, are unfair to you? Injustice, but, like, a different word. Um. I still experience people, like, uh, being hard on me for my decisions, and I don't know why, because, but the way I see it is people can, cognitive dissonance, well, that's, <laughs> that's not what I was looking for, but, uh, it's, it's actually more basic than that, it's a basic word, um, biased, well, that's a part of it, though, obviously, I'm biased, you know. No, what's that word when, like, people, um... 
This is embarrassing. You know, when someone, uh... God damn. It's like, it's like when, when, when the people make assumptions about you. Um, good morning. Judgmental uh, is, is close. Um, um, shitheads, I like that too. Um, that's, but it's close. I don't want to call people shit. They, they like make assumptions about me and then they uh, criticize me. What's that word? You know, it's, it's a very basic word. What, where, what are you guys? You're not helping me at all. I still haven't thought of the word. This is embarrassing. Um, yeah, people make assumptions about me. People, you know, um, bigotry is, it's, it's actually more, it's kind of like bigotry, but it's, it's even more basic than that, the word I'm looking for. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's more basic. I don't know if bigotry is the word. It's it's more basic than that. It's like um, when someone criticizes it. So, but this I can't like half of this broadcast is gonna be me thinking of the super. Yeah, like prejudice. Yeah, you know what? Let's stick with prejudice because it's not prejudice, but it's close. It's um when someone. Uh, anyway, the point is, yeah, prejudice. I, I experience a lot of prejudice for being vegan, and it's dumb, because it's like, why? So I can understand, so you're gay, and you're vegan, and you're in the South? Damn. That's, let's go with assholes. Stereotype? That's close. Um, that is definitely close. I guess what I'm getting at is, I forget, I forget why I started talking about being vegan. <laughs> um... Been, uh, been a military dependent wife for over 30 years. I don't know what's happening. I just came in. Varush, I was talking about, I was actually just talking about the economy and how it's fucked. I was talking about quantitative easing. But I think I'm, uh, what time is it? The, um, the problem with quantitative easing is that all this money that's been printed to um, um, to purchase these troubled as assets still exists and it's scary because that money, I'm telling you, is a nuclear weapon. If, if it were in any way used in the wrong way, it would trigger hyperinflation like you wouldn't believe. And this is kind of like what... Um, and what, what would cause it, what could prompt that to happen? Could it be a raise in interest rates? We don't know. And you know what, that's the type of thing, because there's been a lot of people out there predicting like a hyperinflationary collapse that hasn't happened, and people are like, oh, now nah, they're wrong. Now they're not wrong, it's just the Fed has never had the balls to raise interest rates. It's never happened, they can't do it, and that's why the Fed's losing credibility, and that's why these Fed days are a big deal, because the Fed's been out there like, Oh, we're going to raise rate interest rates, we're going to raise rates, we're going to raise rates. And then every time there's a Fed meeting and they don't, they lose a little bit of uh, credibility. Um, martial law. It's definitely not that, uh, that word I was looking for. It's, it, Uh, I can't believe I can't think of this word. It's really bother- it's like prejudice. I like prejudice. It, that's a good word. People be prejudiced at the vegan person and it's like, why? Does, I'm sorry, does my being vegan bother you? JS, maybe, maybe it's because I'm on the right side of history here. You know, people- that that's another broadcast for another day because I have, um, First of all, it's unpopular to begin with to be vegan, but I also have opinions that are not popular with other vegans. <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll have to make that. Nah, not hypocrisy. It's I think it starts with the C or an O. Um, asexual vegans. That's like that that that's the worst. That's. That's probably worse than being a gay vegan. No, no offense to the gay vegan, but being an asexual vegan, how, how would you even? I don't know. Um, 
hypocrisy is kind of like a, a hypocrite is somebody that does one thing or says one thing and then does another. That's a hypocrite. So it's kind of like, um, I would say the type of person that pretends to care about health or the animals and they're not vegan is a hypocrite. Because you, you, you can't pretend like you love animals and then not be vegan because of the injustice to the animals that's happening in the, um, in the agriculture industry. And that's my whole point, actually. It has less to do with should we eat meat, shouldn't we be eating meat, are we omnivores, are we herbivores? How about, since nobody was around millions of years ago, nobody knows how we were eating, let's talk about now and how animals are treated now. Let, and let's talk about now and what's possible now. Not millions of years ago. And look, I, I can see that being hard to let go of. I ate paleo for years. I lost a lot of weight eating paleo. And I get it. You know, the obsession with trying to eat like our ancestors because, yeah, our ancestors ate olive oil. Whatever. Anyway, the point is, it's... I don't know why I got into that rant. I'm sorry. Let me drop that. Um, um, I think because some vegans put out a superior attitude. Um, so they overshadow the other vegans. That's kind of like yesterday when I was talking about Freely and Durian Rider. Because Freely um, is definitely the type of personality that's not like me. She's out there like... Um, um, being vegan is the way. If you're not eating vegan, you're an idiot. You're going to get cancer. You deserve cancer, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's out there. And, and I can see why people would be infuriated because of that. Versus me, I'm kind of like, nah, I'm vegan because it's the way. And I, I'm also enjoying all these benefits right now from it. So I get to kind of let my actions speak for themselves right now. People are different. So I, I kind of wish... I don't know. I don't, I don't see a point in arguing with each other. That That's why I make a point to be bar bipartisan in these broadcasts. Because if I said anything like, I'm voting for Trump or I'm voting for Hillary, then there'd be arguments upon arguments pages long in the comments. And I won't. Because those arguments go nowhere. At the end of the day, the things that I'm talking about have nothing to do with Democrat or Republican. They have to do with... um. Our economy and our country being run by these billionaires and these giant corporations and this is what happens and these billionaires these co corporations do have they have their own bias they have their own agenda um, George Soros for example very liberal guy um, billionaire runs the media basically so you know everybody's got their agenda um, T. Boom Pickens, I believe, is a um, conservative guy. So they've all got their own... That That's what it has to do with. It's not like a Democrat-Republican. Hi, Cece. Thank you for joining. Um, um, I won't vote for either. Well, I, I mean, that's the thing. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about with these broadcasts. Is it's okay if you don't want to take a stand because... Um, because we're, because you're either picking horrible or horrible, so I kind of, so why? Why even? Um, I don't know. I didn't, I haven't seen Anthony yet. I don't think he's here, though a lot of the regulars are here. Hello. Um, sorry you, you were late. More YouTube drama? God, I gotta get off this QE crap because I'm missing all the drama and all the cool stuff. Um. Also, Soundly Wake is in town right now, so I think I'm seeing him later. That's fun. So, I'm, I'm kind of caught up in these things. I don't know about the drama. I've missed it. Um, people are, like, just joining now, but it's 10.30, so I'm going to conclude this. I'm sorry for the boring... Uh, I hope you guys re-watch this, it's, um, because you guys kind of joined in late, and I should have... Um, I am going to see him. I'm seeing him later. Actually, it's really funny because I'm, um, I'm kind of, well, you guys know, I'm kind of disabled right now. I got to hobble around with a cane. Um, so, and he's on crotches right now for a reason. I'm not sure how he injured himself, but we were talking about hanging out today. 
And I was like, well, we got to go somewhere accessible. Yeah, no tarot card today. I, I, um, see what happened was one of my cards, when I dropped my cards, it rolled under my chair and then I went to pull it under the, then I went to pull it out and I ripped the card in half and I kind of took it as a sign because it was like my favorite card. So I was like, well, maybe I need to give the cards a break. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to do tarot cards on this. Um, it was the Two of Cups. It's such a cute card. I love that card. It's only a two, though, guys. It's no Ten of Cups. Um, the Six of Cups is another one of my favorites, but it was the Two of Cups. I ripped, I ripped it basically in half. So it kind of made me feel like, um, I don't know. I took it personally. <laughs> And that's that. Alright, well, I'm going to conclude this. Thank you for coming to my boring broadcast today, guys. This was not interesting. I want to do another one that's more interesting. Because I want... This is a message I want to help get out. But I don't know how to do it. So I'll be back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Um, I guess I'll talk about the Fed decision tomorrow. I don't know. I guess it's coming out at 2 today. That's when these things usually happen. 2 p.m. Eastern, so, and it's 10 a.m. now, 10.30. So, I'll talk more about it tomorrow. Thank you for coming, Cece, Varouche, Matt, the regulars. Actually, thank you, thank you to all of you that bother coming to these things. Um, I'll see you guys soon. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.